So here's the thing. The week after America announced itself on the world stage as being back to greatness, suddenly confident, one of the main technological planks of that claim have just been shaken to its core by China. The received wisdom on China and technology by many of those in the US is that China steals technology, copies it. But it's nowhere when it comes to actual innovation. And that all the US really needs to do is stop China from getting hold of the most advanced microprocessors and it will never be able to catch up. Particularly in the realm of artificial intelligence. Vladimir Putin once predicted that the country that fully masters artificial intelligence would dominate the world. And from America's point of view, that has been just fine. Because they have the innovative companies. And those companies have been buying absolute truckloads of the most advanced NVIDIA chips to make their massive computer centers to give their AI projects the compute power needed to become the world-leading sophisticated products. So you can understand why some of those US tech stocks took a tumble today as the Chinese AI company DeepSeek launched its latest large language model. It shows comparative performance to those of standard American names such as OpenAI and Meta. In some areas, such as creative writing, it's been touted as superior in performance. But here's the thing. It achieved that performance with far fewer of those NVIDIA chips that the American companies use. And it published its code and a detailed paper showing exactly how it did so, which is more transparent than OpenAI achieved with its own releases. Suddenly raises the question whether all those tech bros who were proclaiming the necessity of vast billions upon billions of dollars of hardware to get to the ultimate AI goal, whether they were just wrong. DeepSeek's model cost roughly $5.6 million to train, which is peanuts, a hundred times cheaper than Meta's Llama 3 model. And now the companies that spent billions upon billions of investors' money on that assumption may turn out to be exposed when it comes to getting the return on that investment. In addition to that, of course, shares in the chip maker NVIDIA also took a tumble, down 12% in pre-market trading today, because their stellar recent stock performance was all based on the assumption that tons of their chips were going to be bought by all these AI companies by necessity. The ones that just learned by studying DeepSeek's alternative approach, how they could actually do the things they want to do with much less chips. Likewise, European chip equipment maker ASML was down nearly 10% in early trading. Shares in Siemens Energy, which supplies electrical hardware for AI infrastructure, fell nearly 20% and various others followed suit. Wall Street's so-called fear gauge, the SIBO Volatility Index, hit its higher level this year. Leading tech investor Mark Andreessen was one of many on Twitter praising DeepSeek's new model. He said it was, quote, the most amazing and impressive breakthrough I've ever seen and a profound gift to the world. He described it as AI's Sputnik moment. This, of course, is a reference to the point back in 1957 when the United States population was startled by the news that the Soviet Union had launched the very first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1. It brought to public attention a perceived technology gap, one that was in complete contradiction to what had been complacent assumptions up until that point. That triggered the creation of NASA and the so-called space race as the US invested significant resources and attention into making up the lost ground, which of course it eventually did. When it comes to AI, this was supposed not to be possible because Joe Biden's chip export controls would make it impossible. But one of the things we have learned through history 
is that necessity is the mother of invention, and the restrictions actually led to the Deep Seek team to solve problems in a more creative and streamlined way than their Western rivals, just because they had to. So the implications of all of this is that firstly, those government export controls, they not just failed, they backfired. Secondly, China's emerging world-class technologists building AI systems have paths available to them to continue to develop at speed and Western efforts to control and monopolise AI development is now unlikely to have a future. There's no policy obviously available to the new Trump administration that especially sidesteps this failure of the previous policy. Mittal Katecha, Asia Head of Emerging Markets at Barclays, told the Financial Times today, it seems as if there is a bit of reality dawning that China has not been sitting idle, even as these tariffs and investment restrictions on tech companies have been put in place. Not everyone, however, is buying into the Sputnik moment narrative or getting overly concerned about the short-term hit to tech stock prices. Dylan Patel, analyst at consultancy Semi Analysis, said to the FT that cutting the cost of training and running AI models would, over the long term, be positive for US tech companies since it would make it cheaper for businesses to really adopt AI applications. At least some in America are more worried about the relative or utilization of AI in warfare and other areas of state conflict and competition. There's no doubt that a lot of assumptions have been thrown into the air. In the meantime, Deep Seek's R1 chatbot has soared to the top of the Apple Store's download charts as users try it out for themselves. And a bunch of people who have spent the last year or so wondering if the AI industry was the next tech bubble waiting to burst, they'll be trying to evaluate how much of a difference this latest news makes to their equations on that score. At the very least, complacent assumptions that US big spending companies would by definition always be able to defend their competitive edge, those have been thrown out.